Hi, Dave Etchells here from Imaging Resource. You know, image stabilization technology has had more benefit for end users than just about anything else in the camera space. And in recent years, it's been getting really, really good. I've been wanting to do an explainer about how IS works for a while, but it's a deep subject and I wanted to be able to really get into it deeply. Before we get into the technical details, it'd probably be good to review briefly what IS actually is. We've all tried to handhold shots in dim light and got blurry pictures as a result. The problem is that we can't hold the camera perfectly still during long exposures, so the image moves around a bit on the sensor surface while the shutter's open. Because the image was moving during the exposure, the picture ends up blurred. As the name suggests, image stabilization basically stabilizes the image of the subject on the sensor surface. There's two ways to do this, depending on whether you're doing the stabilization in the lens or in the camera body. Within body stabilization, the camera just moves the sensor to follow the wandering light rays, so as the image moves around, it always stays on the same spot on the sensor. Lens-based IS does just the opposite. Here, special lens elements bend the light rays to correct for camera movement. With either approach, the aim is to keep the image in the same place on the sensor, regardless of any camera movement. One last point. Image stabilization is rated in stops or steps of correction. Each stop of improvement is another factor of two in how slow a shutter speed you can use. So if the slowest shutter speed you could get sharp images with with a particular camera and lens combination was a two hundredth of a second, a one stop improvement will give you sharp pictures at a hundredth of a second, a two stop improvement sharp images at a fiftieth, etc. In the example we were just talking about, that would be the equivalent of being able to shoot at one twenty-fifth of a second instead of one two hundredth. Nowadays, the very best systems can manage up to seven and a half stops of improvement, and the affordable enthusiast-grade cameras can do up to five and a half stops with body-based IS alone. To give you an idea just how incredible this is, five and a half stops will let you get sharp shots at a quarter of a second instead of one two hundredth, and seven and a half stops would mean you could handhold more than a one second exposure. Olympus has some of the best IS technology on the market, particularly as seen in their EM1X, which has an incredible 7.5 stops of IS stabilization with a 12 to 100 lens on it. So I needed someone that could take me deep inside the cameras and show me really what's going on so I could show you. And Olympus seemed like a natural partner for that. So I'm here in Hachiochi, Japan at Olympus's R&D headquarters. I'm going to be talking with Hisashi Takeuchi. Takuchi-san is the general manager of the mechatronics department here. That's the group that's responsible for all image stabilization, both in lens and in body. And he's going to both explain image stabilization in general terms to us, but also take us deep inside and we'll get to see some of the nuts and bolts that are behind it inside the cameras and lenses. So Takuchi-san, it's good to see you again. See you again. <laughs> Thanks so much for taking your time today and for preparing all the things we're going to see. Um, I guess I'll start out by asking, Olympus has a long heritage with IS. Um, I think it goes back, was the um, E510 the first interchangeable lens that had IS in it? It was, ah. Uh. And um, why did you decide to put IS in the body at that time? Tebure-hosei を 当時のテブレ補正は二軸補正が一般的でした。二軸というのは縦方向の回転ブレ、ピッチと言います。それから横方向の回転ブレの用と言います。これだけであれば、どちらレンズ、ボディどちらに入れてもいいんですけれども、最
こういう違いがあります。まず、うん、ユニットの違いがあります。うんうんえー、こちらがですね、えー、手ぶれを検出するセンサーになります。ここにですね、えー、加速度センサー、三軸加速度センサーと、うんうんえー、ジャイロ、回転ぶれを制するジャイロが一つ、二、うんうん、つ。三つ、三つ入っています、うんうん。二軸補正はジャイロが二つしかないんですけれども、五軸の場合は。一二三四つのデバイス、うん、こちらが、うんえー、あります。この違いがあります。I suggested doing this video with Olympus because you seem to really have the, the most developed IS. The EM1X, as I said in the intro, gets seven and a half stops of reduction when you pair it with the appropriate lens. What is it that's let you get to such a, a high level of stabilization? EM1X で世界最高の 7.5 段の補正性能ができた理由なんですがその一番の理由がジャイロになりますで、えー、と EM1X のジャイロこちらに見られるジャイロですけれどもこれはジャイロメーカーのセイコーエプソンさんと3年間共同開発を行って作り上げた特別なジャイロになりますこのジャイロは従来一番性能が良かったジャイロからさらに一桁性能がいいものになっています Five axis, when does the camera need to use the pitch and yaw correction and when does it need to use the X and Y? Pitch to yaw is a little bit of 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 a People often wonder if you could get more IS effect by putting an IS lens and an IS body together. Two should be better than one, right? Well, they can be, but only if the camera knows how to work with the lens. Otherwise, the lens and camera would both be trying to compensate for the same motion. So the end result would be the same amount of blur, just in the opposite direction. Basically, the lens would move the light, and then the sensor would move the same amount, actually creating blur. But some Olympus cameras and lenses can work together. The lens makes as much correction as it can, and then the camera can add to it to handle an even greater range of motion. The in body IS can also correct for roll, too, when the camera rotates along the axis of the lens. As we learned earlier, lens based IS can only compensate for pitch and yaw rotation. So, we've been talking a lot about aspects of IS, but how does it actually work? How do you go from the gyro and the accelerometer to actually moving the Uh, the or the lens. まずジャイロで5軸のブレを検出しますそして検出されたブレ量はこちらの手ブレ補正マイコンで処理されますこの手ブレ補正マイコンはカスタム仕様で作った特別なものになっています2つの CPU コアがあって高速演算が可能になっていますで高速演算が可能になっていますそしてこの CPU で処理されたブレ量は補正量として計算されます。Once the camera knows how much it needs to move the sensor, how does it actually move it? The answer is what's called a voice coil motor. The name comes from audio loudspeakers, which were the first devices to use the technique. Basically, when you run an electrical current through a coil of wire, it creates a magnetic field. If there's a permanent magnet nearby, it will push against the coil's field and apply a force to the coil itself. In a body based IS system, the image sensor is mounted on a sliding carrier plate with coils positioned around the edges. Strong magnets are placed above and beneath each coil, so when current flows through them, the whole coil slash sensor assembly will move back and forth. The amazing thing about these systems is that the sensor assembly rides on tiny ceramic bearings that keep it flat to within a few thousandths of a millimeter while it's moving around, and the coils and magnets need to be able to position it with roughly the same accuracy as well. Here, Takuchi san is taking apart the IS assembly from the EM5 Mark III. さらに分解すると、コイルが見つかるのが分かりいただけるかと思います。そして反対側にもマグネットがあって、えー、コイルを挟み込むような形になります。So how do you, how does the camera or the processor know exactly where the sensor is? It has to be able to detect that very precisely. はい。まずこちらにあるのが位置検出用の磁石になります。組み立てた。そしてこの辺にホール素子があります。
ホール素子の出力を見ることでイメージセンサーがどこに位置しているのかが分かります。So the EM5 Mark III is so small, and we saw the sensor was much smaller than previous generations. What did you have to do to fit the IS into such a small body? こちらが EM1 Mark II の IS ユニット、そしてこちらが EM5 Mark III の IS ユニットになります。見ていただいた通りかなり小さくなっていると思います。こちらが EM1 Mark II の IS ユニット、それからこちらが今回開発しました EM5 Mark III の IS ユニットになります。面積比で 15% それから重量比で 25% の小型軽量化を測っていますこちらの場合はコイルはここにありましてプレートの上に乗っかっています e m 5 m a r k III の場合はそのプレートがありませんああコイルは実際に内側のフレームで薄くできていますうん、うんうん So far, we've been talking about body based IS, but as we mentioned earlier, Olympus also makes lens based IS systems as well that in many cases can work together with the in body systems. Their lens based IS systems use the same sort of gyro chips and voice coil motor technology that we saw earlier. They're just moving a lens element instead of the image sensor. Here, Takuchi san is taking us through a sample of their excellent 300 mm F4 lens to show us how the IS elements are arranged in it. こちらが 300mmF4 のカットモデルになりますこちらに見えるのが IS ユニットの断面図になりますそれからこちらに見えるのがジャイロになりますそしてこの IS ユニットの部品はこちらになりますこういうふうに見えます基本的に VCM を使って駆動しているのでセンサー IS と同じになります。違うのはレンズを動かしていることになります。センサーもう一つセンサーと違うのは縦横には動くんですけれども回転はしません。ですのでロールブレ補正はできません。手ぶれ補正をするためにはジャイロは絶対に必要になりますので必ずレンズの中に入ってなければいけませんオリンパスのカメラであればボディにジャイロはありますがボディのジャイロの情報を通信でレンズに送るのは通信のトラフィックも増えますしタイムラグも増えますのであまり適切ではなりません So as I said before, Olympus has really led the field with IS What are your future directions and, and where do you plan to take it? オリンパスカメラの特徴の一つに小型軽量機動性というものがありますこの強みをさらに伸ばし三脚がなくても手持ちで取れるシーンをさらに増やしていくそのためにこの手ぶれ補正の技術もさらに向上させていきたいと思っています Wow, well that was really great Thanks so much for putting together all of that I had no idea we were going to see so much of the different、um, you know, insides of the cameras and I've never seen really the Inside of a body based IS system. So, thank you so much for taking the time for that. どういたしまして So, that wraps up our guided tour of IS systems here at Olympus. I have to say, I, I love seeing the inside, the nuts and bolts of how things work. So, this was just pure pleasure for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it too.、Um, you can see more of our technical content by following the links、uh, underneath. And let us know your thoughts and questions in the comments. We'll try to respond.